Good afternoon, one and all, and thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak at this the World Social Forum being held at Kathmandu. I wish I could be there in person, but other uh, appointments and other schedules have forced me to uh, cancel my travel plans. But again, uh, very thankful that among all the speakers and some of them very elite, like Dr. Sreshta, Mr. Tarasingh Mamu, both of whom I have had the privilege of meeting in person. Uh, the topic today is uh, ending inequity is imperative if we are all to end TB and deliver on the One Health for All. And the question and the main word in this is inequity or equity or the lack of equity. Over the last couple of years, I've been traveling across the globe and one recent and in one recent travel, I think it was last month in South Africa, there was this discussion uh, in which uh, Dr. Madhukar Pai from McGill University did speak very eloquently on the immense divide between the Global South and the Global North and what global healthcare is all about. And in doing so, a lot of people threw up uh, their point of views, their um, thought processes and, you know, all ended up saying, what is global healthcare to be defined as, or what do we really mean by global healthcare? You know, the under the normal understanding of the global south and the global north in terms of the geographies of the countries, 75% of the global population, the world's population, are in the countries which unfortunately constitute the global south, and 20% or 25% of the global population are in the so-called global north, the economically advanced, politically more evolved, and financially more um, robust. So when we define uh, global healthcare and we say that 75% people are at the receiving end of global healthcare, in which means that they don't have access to uh, lo uh, proper health care, they don't have access to a lot of uh, life-saving uh, requirements like drinking water and stuff like that. Uh, the, the debate generally gets very, very animated and heated because uh, at the end of the day what we see in terms of uh, public health distribution, public health policy, that countries from the global north, people who are sitting in the committees that make up the global north, are the ones who actually call the shots or build the uh, pathways for uh, uh, interventions to kind of take place in terms of health care and health deliverables, including diagnostics of which we are a part. So one school of thought is when people from the global north are kind of doing whatever they're doing, which is good, but it is a part of strategy that is where the issues set in. However, if the same were to be done in an empathic way, in terms of because we are human, we would want to do this for the other humans who may be at a disadvantage, then the case is completely, completely different. And that sets us in the IVD space to kind of look at what are the inequities that we kind of face in the overall diagnostics landscape and now, of course, specifically looking into uh, infectious diseases like tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and so on and so forth. Again, globally, primarily across countries in the global south, you will see that the technologies that are being used or utilized are primarily technologies that have uh, been conceived, designed, and manufactured in the global north. And while the funders are from countries dominated by the global north the funds do come into the global south but these funders have also kind of uh, put in their propositions in such a way that uh, while the countries do get the money from the global south they really do not have the freedom to choose as to what kind of interventions they would want to have what kind of inter interventions that really work well for their kind of situations because what works really well in advanced countries may not really work all that well in not so advanced countries for a variety of reasons. 
situations are different, the culture is different, the requirements are different, there is limitations in terms of energies, in terms of electricity, power, etc., and so many things. So when we talk about uh, the equity or the lack of it, I think it is very stark that the overall uh, acceptance that equity is a very, very cliched word and there really is uh, much more to be done, if I were to say that, because there is really no equity as of now. So how do we get over it? The question is, how do we get over it? And I would just say that, you know, there are various methods that we could utilize to ensure that uh, at least we get some parity, at least we get some semblance of equity in the world that we live in. And that is by, you know, looking inwards, looking inwards, because there is always a global south and global north, and that's going to remain. But if you really look at it, uh, there is not a global south and global north in terms of countries. Even your own country, there are mines which actually represent the global south and there are other mines which actually represent the global mo uh, north. And in your own mind too, in your own human mind too, there is a part of it that tends to go global north at times and there is a part of it that thinks, oh, I wish I could do this for the global south. So it's really left to us as human beings in terms of a choice as to what choice do we uh, go with you know as they say life is defined by the choices you make so if we choose to provide for something to people who are at a disadvantage but as a part of strategy it really doesn't make uh, much sense because then you're always going to create expectations in a reverse mode so I'm giving you something, I need to get something back in return, which is the case that we generally see across the world in this uh, global south, global north divide. But if you are looking at everything from a point of empathy, from a humanistic uh, viewpoint, you would actually do something without wanting nothing in return. And that's where I think the a choice of the individual comes into play that I will give them the money but I will give them the freedom to choose the freedom to choose what is good for themselves themselves as a country the freedom to choose what works for them locally and then which makes uh, uh, situations for countries receiving such grants and such uh, largesse from the global north that much more easier because then uh, with the freedom comes a whole uh, gamut of responsibilities, then people tend to take more interest, knowing that they could choose from a variety of platforms that there exists. In Harare last month, we also took, talked about this uh, North-South divide, and the, the idea was being that, knowing that this uh, divide exists, we should actually take a the services more to the communities, or in other words, allow the communities have, to have a much bigger stake. And I completely, completely agree with that. Because at the end of the day, if we are creating, if we are um, developing technologies to uh, go and make an impact at the last mile, then who are the people at the last mile? It's the communities, right? So people who form the communities, people like you and me, uh, who should take up the cudgels on behalf of those who are underserved, those who do not really have access, and start uh, demanding rather than kind of uh, quote-unquote begging that we need this and we need that. It's your body, it's my body. Therefore, I have every right to demand the best possible in terms of diagnosis, the best possible in terms of treatment, because uh, simply because you are born in the global north, your right to life is not in any way higher than my right to life just because I'm born in a country that is in the global south. So again, from the uh, disparate equity or the absence of equity that we have, uh, I would say there are various ways to counter and not really lament with the absence of equity that there is today, which is so visible, and people are kind of accepting it and very unapologetically too. The best thing is to be proactive and uh, keep working with measures that kind of uh, bring some sort of parity, some sort of respectability 
to this great inequity, to this great divide that there is, and brings out some sort of succor to the uh, lives of the underserved, the poor, the downtrodden, uh, whose lives can be that much more dignified, provided they can take uh, uh, situations to their doorstep rather than they have to come all the way. Especially this being a TB uh, specific uh, uh, meeting today in terms of the diagnostics and the therapy, I think the world will be a much better place and it is showing with the impact that we have had over the last two, three years as we are taking diagnostics more to the countryside, more to the hinterland, more to the rural areas, inaccessible areas. And you will see the smile in the face of that person who would otherwise lose his daily wage because he has to get tested and he would be without work till the result of that test comes in. But in this case, as we take services to their doorstep, that same person can come for a test, wait for an hour, go back with the result. He doesn't lose any wage, he doesn't lose any sleep, and there is no stress. So these small, small things will go a long way to making lives much better, much more uh, enjoyable, even for those who otherwise do not have the best of everything that we are privileged to have. And in this one life of ours, I think that is the minimum that we can try and do is see that our actions without any expectations help people in the last mile. I think that will bring a smile to all our faces, a smile that no money in the world, the thousands of dollars in this world can buy. That is all I wanted to share and I'm sure uh, everybody else uh, who, will, who have spoken before me and who will be speaking, speaking beyond, after me will be sharing their thoughts. At the end of the day, my take is that we just need to be more human in our approach, uh, more understanding, more science-backed, and be proactive and be positive all the time. And in doing all of that, believe me, we can actually bridge this divide that there is between the global south and the global north. I really don't go far so far into the countries as I started. There is a global north and a global south in our own minds. In our own minds, if we are more human, more empathic, I think the global south will dominate rather than the global north, which is one of privilege, which is one of pride, and which is one of power. Thank you very much.